Asante uh, sana Simon. Good morning everyone. Hamjambo. Asante sana. Um, my name is Tim Wanyonyi. I'm a member of Parliament for Westlands constituency. I'm serving the second term. I was elected when I was like this. But <laughs> you remember I was replacing somebody whom people thought he was larger than life. <laughs> Fred Gumo in uh, Westlands. The moment, uh, the first day I, I went for a, a political uh, gathering, when I was wheeled on the podium, people started wondering, Ai, Sasa, who you? Ataweza? But I ignored. When I spoke, they realized uh, maybe I can. They gave me the benefit of doubt, but yes, they say the rest is history. Ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Danita has spoken passionately about um, reporting. But I know this is just a passion. You'll never be taught by anybody what you can passionately uh, top than write or follow. Sindio? Even teachers, um, I've been to t schools with the children with disability. Teachers who are in those schools are trained, they, they train themselves. Nobody. The government doesn't have curriculum for that. Or maybe they do, but they don't use it. So teachers who teach children with disability, they just develop that passion and then they just defeat and start following that line. So it is, uh, it is something that maybe you can passionately just take as, 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 a, as a calling or something like that. Then you can develop it yourself. I can tell you two stories. One, two countries that I've visited that have shown a very high level of disability that uh, it is taken with respect, with passion, and it's a constitutional issue. One is the U.S. If you go to the, U to the U.S., every shop or place you enter, you will see a, a very big uh, write-up there saying, declaring we are uh, utter compliant. Utter compliant is American with Disability Act. So they are utter compliant which means if you enter that building, you can go anywhere. You can go to the washroom, you can do, you can go to the shelves, you can shop without anybody following you. If there are corridors, a corridor must be wide, wide enough that if you enter, you can make, you can turn around and go back where you are coming from. So in, tho in those countries, disability, if you discriminate against a person with disability, it's a constitutional issue and it's very serious. And uh, when I was at City Hall here as a, a nominated councillor, I remember I started uh, a program where we reserved parking slots on every street in Nairobi. I'm sure you saw those signs almost on every corner of the street. And we say the people with disability, and we are positioning them very strategically because we are putting them the nearest uh, these uh, facilities like banks, uh, supermarkets, where people are frequent. And uh, most disappointingly, people who used to come and insist parking there, people who have no disability, and when they are told, they misbehave. I remember when I was still at City Hall, there was a parking that was reserved for, for me. And then uh, the CEO of Coca-Cola was coming to go and see the, the mayor. He came, and when he was told not to park there, he parked there forcibly and went up. And then I arrived shortly after he had parked. And those guys saw me and said, Mweshimiwa, tulimuambia akakata. So I called the security and told them, clamp this car and they clamped it. Then I went to the meeting. So when he finished with the mayor, he came back to go and, and take his car, and he found this, the car clamped. He went back to the mayor's office. He thought now the mayor is so powerful, he would just order anybody to go and. He ordered the security, everybody refused. They said to go and ask Mwishmiwa Wanyonyi. They came, I was chairing a meeting. I said, you'll wait until I finish my meeting. The meeting took, 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 it took two hours. He waited there. Two hours. 
Then after two hours, we took him somewhere, we gave him a lecture, then he went and opened the car <laughs> to leave. Yes. So, and in those countries like the US and other European countries, where you see a disabled sign and you park there, there's a fine of $500. You know, they, they don't just mean words. In Japan, uh, you know, when you see toilets in, in, in some of our public places where it's reserved for, for, for people with disability, it is just a sign of the wheelchair there. It is one, it's for both women and men. In Japan, they reserve, there's one for women and for, uh, for men. So they recognize that we are different, okay? And all that and all that. So in this country, we have made some strides. We have moved at least from the charity to the to, to rights, what Jagi was talking about. We're no longer dealing about charity. We don't look for charity. We expect that we must uh, be given our rights. That's why we say disability rights are human rights. And we must always appreciate that. In parliament, we represent I represent Westlands and also represent people with disability. Honorable Danita represents people with disability. Honorable Senator Ketut represents people with disability. There are counties in this country that today, if we went uh, to, to, to ask for threshold, they don't meet because they don't have, they have nom not nominated a person with disability. They don't have, they are not properly constituted, in other words because they don't have a person with disability in their representation. And several of them, one of them is Vihika County. The second one is Nairobi County. So those ones, if somebody applied in court, they can be dissolved because they are not properly constituted. And uh, for us to get it right, I think when we want representation, we're also saying even in the parliament, so that persons with disability are not just lumped in one corner, we are trying to introduce this uh, legislation in almost every government agency that they must all have uh, disability compliance uh, so that we are not just placed at the Ministry of Labor. You want something when I can be under your ministry. We want it to be applied everywhere. Yeah? And also many other things. At, le at, least, at, at least when we, when we start this journey, let us try to understand some small, small things. If you get the UN uh, Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, and you read it, you will see how many, how many th the things they have highlighted there, you, including the language used to, to address people with disability, and uh, many other things that we are supposed to do. In our own legislation, Persons with Disabilities Act, there are so many things like um, places must be accessible, places like this. When I come here, it must be accessible. And that was to be done within five years since the legislation was enacted. Access to public transport was supposed to happen. It has never happened. We still do take these vehicles for inspection and they come back like that. And on and on, there are so many things there, including people who have children with disability. When you hide or conceal a person with disability, you are committing a crime. You can be arrested and be judged in court. So all what we need is now maybe come up with some education that can, and the media is, is, is a very important partner in this. If you highlight issues with disability properly, people will start changing and looking at things differently. Because I am a person with disability, I go to schools and I tell those schools, let us include children with disability in the normal schools not taking them to private to special schools. Unless a child has severe disability, they must go to the normal schools. And on and on, and we go on. And when we go to, to places, even a state house, you reach there, the place is totally inaccessible. So when people are going through here, yeah, I go around. Before I enter, they have finished maybe the first round of discussion they're doing. Correct. Yeah? When you go to eat, we patala kwenye apa ifu upele kwa ifu piti ya chikoni uchikujie uko, leo doingi uko. 
<laughs> yeah, it is true. So it is something that we need to passionately address. You know, we, we don't, I don't feel ashamed talking about certain issues over and over. Yeah? I remember once I was on the street here, I was going to some shop, I wanted to buy a radio. Kitambo, just when I was just newly uh, disabled. I was struggling to get into the shop because there was a step, hapo kwa mlango, and uh, this muindi rushes out and gives me five bob and I say, Maleo, si siku yenu, utakuja siku yu ingiri. I, I, I did not get to take five bob, but I just struggled and ended, and I bought a, sh a radio, which was worth about 16,000 Kenya shillings. That was in 1998. So after that, he followed me and apologized profusely and said, oh, but I just said, it's okay. But when I go anywhere and I find any person, person with disability being, being mistreated, I don't take it kindly. Yeah? My wife is even more aggressive. There was once we were going home and we wanted to use, we went to the airport to use uh, 540. I think airline. When I got to boarding, they told me that they don't have any uh, facility for me to get on the on the plane. So actually, they left us there. <laughs> they say they don't have any facility for us, as we should have said. But I said, we, 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 I said when I was booking the ticket. So you find that such a thing. You remember the story of uh, Emi Koske's father in Eldoret when they left him on the runaway. It's the same thing. So this discrimination is there, but we must fight it. And we can fight it when it's properly highlighted in the media and is shown. And those of us who have disability, we should also not be afraid to speak about certain things. We should be open and we should say it very precisely. OK? Because there are many times you know, in Parliament, I was shocked when I went to check on the list of people seeking tax exemption in Parliament. I realized there are about 50 members of disability, uh, members of Parliament with disability. But when we were in Katiba, we were only nine. <laughs> 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 eh? In tax exemption, the list is very long. There are, there are actually 50 people. I also saw the list when they brought me the list to sign when we are going for parliamentary sports. I saw people I've never known that they have a disability. <laughs> they are on that list and asking for us to give them that right so that they go for the parliamentary games. Then I said, what? <laughs> then why are they hiding? And in parliament, we have invited for this meeting, actually. And they refuse to come. And you can obviously see this guy is disabled. <laughs> eh? So there's no shame about it. I'm proud about it. My children have never known me in any other way, only this wheelchair. Because they, 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 they were very small when I got uh, an accident. So for us to develop and, and drive disability, let us take it to the highest level. At the representation, at parliament, at count assemblies, appointive positions in government, we also want that to be attained because in law is given 5%, which has never been attained. I remember through my organization, we, we, we started that program and we went to Safaricom and some other co companies to so that they can employ people with disabilities. Safaricom took it. And right now they say, uh, Michael Joseph said he will do 5%, but he said he wants to do 10. Last time we were there, they said they are about, uh, at about 8%, but they want to reach 10%. And we can encourage many, many other organizations to employ people with disability because they have no extra cost People fear that we have an extra cost. We don't have any extra cost. Me, as long as you give me a desk to work, I'll do my work. And I can tell you, we can do more than. Uh, once we sit there, we'll deliver. Yeah? Have you seen even the rating of members of parliament in matters of performance? I have been rated number one several times. It's not that, uh, you know? Because we know we can perform. And we just want to see how we can highlight issues with disability. Children with disabilities must be given education. 
We have seen parents who are very afraid to tell the world that they have a child with disability because uh, neighbors will, will look at them differently because you what? You remember the man who came there from Australia without limbs? I don't know, he was called, what was his name, Jackie? Yeah, so, so, uh, he's, he's, yeah, he's, a, he's a, a motivational speaker. He goes all around, around the world speaking. He has no limbs, he has no hands, he has no legs. It said that when he was at the age of going to school, his mother took him to school and no school wanted to take him. She went to court, she sued the government, and they changed everything about uh, looking at people with disability. It became a constitutional issue, and from then, children with disability in Australia go to school free of charge, the government takes care of them. And even here we want, we are pushing for that, that we pass this uh, budget for, for, for National Council for Persons with Disability, but they don't give them enough money because the census is, has reduced the number of people with disability from almost six million to less than a million. I don't know how that happened. It's because of the questionnaire, the way they framed it. When they went to, uh, when they were doing the census, the numerators will come. The question they'll ask you definitely, you leave and they say you are not disabled. Because the question was not properly framed. Especially like those culture, the, 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 the traditional places where people fear disability. They could not disclose that they have a child or a person with disability within their families. So we have that, those problems. But what we are saying, ladies and gentlemen, it just help us highlight issues of disability, especially at the level where we are. Through Ketiba, we want to reach out, we want to go to the counties, we want to go to the lowest level possible to engage and bring out people so that they can see us and then even those parents who fear, they can see that even people with disability can be something. Sawa. Because uh, me, when I go anywhere, even people who don't know me, they just recognize me immediately. They say, Who in Mpungua Westlands? Because they have seen me. But as uh, Jackie said, the moment you see me, when I'm coming and you see my wheelchair first, then you have a problem. Sindio? You kuna shida. And we used to say, Nothing about us without us. And that is the motto that we drive. So, at Ketiba, today we invited you, just as, 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 as a session, we interact together, you understand us, and you can ask questions. And sometimes, even we go to a level, you know, when I used to have my fun the functions with my organization, I will, we will do the write-up so that we give you just to enrich it. So you look at it, and then maybe you, you, you change it in your own way, you go and edit it, and do something. Sometimes maybe you don't understand what the organization is doing or what, what this group is doing. We just do a media briefing and then we give that uh, write-up so that when you go and read and then you enrich it. Because there's some uh, language that has to be used must be uh, moderated. Sindio? So, uh, there has to be moderated, moderated so that you capture things properly. Like me, sometimes people, with, we are called paraplegics. Sometimes you find you are being called Paralympic. <laughs> I'm a parallel, something, you know. Until you check properly and see how is it. <laughs> so it is something that we learn slowly. But me, I'm very sure we are on the right track. We can we will achieve this if we do it together. And uh, we are, as a caucus, we are recognized in the parliament, as a parliamentary caucus. And we are given that privilege as a parliamentary caucus, just like EOBA and other caucuses that exist in parliament. So we are trying to push and push so that we leave something behind when we go away. The people will come after us, they'll find that we have laid a foundation for them to continue developing on issues with disability. You know, BBI had completely omitted BBI, uh, disability in the, in the whatever. But when we went to Naifasha, we cost him back and they brought it back. Because of these small voices, you remember uh, Honorable Senior when she was, she was in Parliament alone. And that time she was not representing people with disability. She was nominated by Safina 
to replace uh, Leek, Uyonani, and Richard Leek, for being, uh, for having been thrown out. So she went and her voice echoed in parliament at that time. Now we have several members, at least we have many of them, those who are passionate about disability. Honorable uh, Danita here, Honorable Musuruve, Maura, Honorable Sangok. We speak passionately about disability. In fact, when issues are in parliament, you'll find we don't, we, we are not even, even if a motion is brought by someone, even who is not with disability, we come out and take it up and, and, and push it. So, so, so that we have to deal with issues at the highest level. And if we cannot deal with them, then we will, we will do it. Yeah? We just need to find a way of trying to push. Even if we get one thing right at a time, it will actually give us uh, a lot of milestone. Then we can achieve as much as we can. So together, I'm sure we can do something. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, and may God bless you. Please walk with us, and never fear to ask any question. Ask any question. There are people who are asking questions about, about uh, sex life. We, 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 we sit and talk about these things. People keep on wondering, eh? Uh, utaweza? Lakini nasema naweza. <laughs>